I work in two fields, so partly I work as a clinical advisor to the stem cell laboratories here and my role is as a doctor, as a, as a clinician working with patients out there in the field is to talk to scientists about whether what they're doing can be applied to patients and to the diseases that we currently treat. And the other part of my job is that I am a regular haematologist, uh, so I treat um, blood cancers and I work at Peter McCallum Cancer Centre in Melbourne. And in that setting, um, I obviously do a lot of conventional cancer treatments with cancer drugs, treating diseases like lymphoma and myeloma and myelodysplastic syndromes and leukaemia. Um, and within the treatment of all of those kind of diseases is actually where we do use stem cell treatments. The thing about cancer is that in general you can treat cancer with conventional chemotherapy and often get it to go into a remission which means that we can no longer actually see any cancer when we do the usual scans and, and tests that we do. But we know that at a microscopic level there are still cells around that will eventually recur and, and cause a relapse of the disease. And so that's why for a lot of cancers it's not a curable disease. And what we have learned over time is that some cancers actually will be able to be cured if only you could give a really high dose of chemotherapy or radiation or both. And the trouble with that is that a, a patient's body usually can't cope with such high doses of chemotherapy or radiation. And what stops them being able to cope is the fact that their bone marrow can't survive such high doses of toxic treatment. And so what we then learnt is that bone marrow regrows from stem cells and the stem cells live in the bone marrow. So these stem cells are the particular group of stem cells called hemopoietic stem cells, meaning that they make new bone marrow and new blood. And so then what we figured out was that if you could take those stem cells out of the bone marrow before you give the really high dose treatment, you could then give the bone marrow stem cells back to a patient. Those stem cells would move, usually via the bloodstream, back into the bone marrow set up shop again and start making new bone marrow and actually help the patient to recover quicker from their therapy and survive the treatment. In allogeneic transplantation it's a very similar idea except that the stem cells that we use to help get people through high dose therapy is actually, are actually obtained from another donor, somebody else's stem cells. Um, and again, the idea there is that the stem cells come in to regrow the bone marrow after a, after a big dose of toxic therapy. But in addition to that, if there are stem cells from somebody else's bone marrow, we, what we hope is that we'll get a little bit of um, immune fighting of the, the patient's cancer. So the, the donor bone marrow stem cells will come in and actually set up effectively a new immune system, the donor's immune system within the patient's body. And that donor immune system recognises cancer cells as being foreign and attacks the cancer cells if there are any left in them after their high-dose therapy.